coming towards the end to talk about everything. Because I think, you know, I'm here presenting, but there's a lot of uh, teachers in this room who use the same thing. So, probably in a different way. Okay, so, um, so this is a step that I use in the writing process. And so, the writing process for me would be, of course, uh, finding the topic and brainstorming and doing multiple drafts, right? And editing those multiple drafts. The problem that I found with teaching ESL learners the writing process is they need some sort of scaffolding, they need some examples before they're able to write. Um, if you ask a second language learner to sit down and to brainstorm something, you're not gonna get very good vocabulary. So really quick, how do you guys have uh, your students scaffold their essays? Any? Reading. Reading. Discussion. Discussion. Anything else? Concept maps. Summarizing. Vocab okay. exercises. Graphic organizers. Graphic organizers, like word webs, things like that, right? Um, so we're going to be looking at using reading and finding vocabulary and collocations in reading. Uh, and I'll show you some of the some worksheets that I do. Um, so first off, let me pull up a reading that I've used recently. Um, so first, let's start with the frequency list. Now I have, this is my lesson that I go through with students, and I'm going to kind of go through it really quickly with, with you guys, um, but I only have 25 five copies of this. So hopefully you can share. Um, and if you, if you don't need one, if you can just kind of look up here, then maybe give it to somebody else. And I will provide these to you later. Um, I think ALP has all your email addresses, and so I'll make this stuff available. So if you don't get one now, don't worry, you can get one later, okay? So I'll just have you pass them back. And have you pass them back, please. Okay, so first, you know, students need some sort of guided practice for these websites. They're really sort of, uh, they're great, but they're sometimes difficult. So the first time, they're, they're difficult to understand how to use until you start using them. And I found also that, you know, as I'm using it with students, the students are actually teaching me things that I would never have realized. Um, so I don't know what it is about the younger generation, but they're much better with uh, technology than I ever could be, right? So um, when you type in word and phrase.info, it takes you to this page here for some reason. Um, so, so you want to go to, now I've lost it. Oh, here it is. On the left-hand side, word and phrase. Um, so you'll see related. And if you wanted to, you could do, uh, So then it takes you to this. Uh, I don't know why the word and phrase dot info is the same address. It's supposed to take you here to begin with, but I, I don't know why it doesn't. So you'll find that this site's a little bit temperamental sometimes, but you just have to kind of work with it. Um, so what we're going to do first off is we're going to go to frequency list. So basically what I want students to do is just take one word and to look for collocations around that one word. So if you look at this um, paper here, you want them to just type in a word. So for example, uh, I start out with the word. No, you have to share with somebody. And in fact, let me pull it up here so maybe you can sort of look at it together. So I start out with the word wash here. So Pat, are we all on our cell phones or something? What's that? When we're doing this, we're all on our cell phones? This, my students, I take them to the computer lab and have them do it. But if I, you don't have a computer lab, could you do it on a cell phone? You cannot do it on a cell phone unless your cell phone is of a certain screen resolution. Oh, okay. um, you can do it with iPads of a certain screen resolution. So this class is basically geared for uh, upper 
intermediate to advanced level students, um, usually college students who are going towards college, um, but really anybody can use it. And usually, um, I, I have either students bring their laptops and share their laptops, or I do it in a computer lab. Some, again, some cell phones will do it, some, some um, uh, tablets will do it too. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're just writing in the word and you're hitting search. And it gives you uh, two different versions of the word, right? And, or it gives you all the versions of the word, all the parts of the speech of the word. And so what you want to draw the attention, the student's attention to is um, how many lists are there? How many lists do you see there? Obviously one and two. And then you say, well, why do you have uh, one list and two lists? And it's because it's a verb and a noun. Um, I talked to them about the rank of the word and the frequency of a word a little bit. And I also talked to them about the use in the different types of uh, um, genres. So for example, spoken, fiction, magazine, newspaper, and academic. Okay? Um, and then they can start to explore the, world, the word from there. So for example, we typed in wash. Why are there two words? There are two because one's a noun and one's a verb. Um, and so then it says click on the verb wash. So we'll go here and we'll click on the verb wash. And from here, what it does is it gives you definitions and it gives you co-locations. Uh, so you want to start looking at these definitions and co-locations. Um, I like to have my students, uh, as you can see here, Um, how many definitions does it give? And it gives five different definitions. Well, to clean with a chemical process, to clean one's body, um, and to clean with agents such as soap and water, kind of the same, right? Um, so you can talk to them about that as you go. Now, I'm giving you what I do. If you want to work with another word and, and do your own sort of search, I definitely encourage that, right? Um, so, but not only, so then I asked my students, to, okay, they have these definitions, and one of the problems I found with these is I like to have my students, before they do their writing, when they do their brainstorming, they get a reading, they find keywords on their topic, they take those words and they start writing collocations with those words. But the problem I found I've had is they use collocations that don't relate to their topic. <laughs> right? So if their topic is, um, you know, talking about a flood to move as if by water, uh, they'll give me a co-location, I was washing dishes the other day. And so I'll say, well, how does washing dishes and a flood, how does that relate? So I want to start to get them to understand the context of the phrase and the co-location in the concordance examples down here. And so what I do is I say, okay, find how many definitions does wash have? I want you to find uh, examples from here that match with the definitions. So for example, if we take, um, which I grappled with again as I washed and changed for dinner. That would be, what? Washing dishes. Right, and if you had something else, um, a burst of sunlight washed across the tessel, <laughs> I can't even get that word, tessellated floor. Um, so then it's a, it's a very different meaning of wash, right? So they have to then come up with and, and um, say, okay, definition number one, here's an example, definition number two, here's an example. So they can start to understand that collocations have to have a context in which they fit. Um, I also want to bring it to their attention, the, the colors of these words. Let me see if I can expand this a little bit more. Okay, it is a little bit better. So I asked them, you know, what words are in pink? Anybody? Birds. Birds. What words are in blue? Nouns. Nouns. What words are in uh, yellow? Prepositions. Prepositions. Orange? <laughs> They're adverbs, I guess. <laughs> I mean, wash down? I guess that's an adverb. Uh, what words are in green? Adjectives. So they're starting to look for these co-location patterns, which we'll talk about co-location pattern in a little bit. Um, okay, so they, they've got the understanding that, okay, these are, uh, there are co-location patterns that the colors represent different co um, 
parts of speech. Um, let's see. I have to go fast. Okay. You can also look for synonyms with this uh, website, and just by looking over here in the left-hand column, you're, you're looking at the synonyms. And of course, it gives you the uh, definition in, or, or a proper synonym in, in blue, and then it gives you more synonym for the words in blue. So there's an exploratory exercise in this uh, handout that helps them figure that out. Not only are there, uh, you can go more specific with the synonyms and get the definition, and then, which is followed by the, um, the, the word that it defines. So wash is cleanse with a chemical process, base is cover with liquid before cooking. Uh, so they start to explore the um, synonym. There's more general synonyms that give you the gen more, a more general idea. There's multi-word synonyms, which they can click on to start to look at phrasal verbs and things like that. Uh, so they're supposed to begin looking for collocations, right? And so I would say something like, if they're doing the verb wash, and uh, they're talking about some like plumbing or something like that, something to do with water, uh, they're gonna have to go through here and look at the nouns, verbs, uh, adjectives, or miscellaneous words, and start. they wanna start to discover how these words collocate with wash. And so with this website, you can go and you can click just like on water, and it gives you, it shows you how water is collocating um, with the word wash. And so just looking here, does water, or water tend to come before or after the verb wash? Before. So water washes, um, you use water to wash, and so the students are then asked to write down these collocations. And so, um, what sort of things follow? What part of speech follows the, the verb wash? Right, so you're looking at prepositions um, here, and so it's going wash away. And so then I have the students write down, okay, wash away, um, wash down, wash by, and they, they start to begin to understand that wash has many other words that go around it to use in um, certain contexts. So this is an exercise just so they can start to explore this, the words, right? Um, the one that I really like to have them use, let me go here. Is the input and analyze phrase. Um, so let me give you the other handout for this. And again, there's only 25 copies. I'll give you more later. Please try to share. So this is really what I do with my writing classes. And so you guys said that you use reading as a way to sort of um, explore collocations and to have them brainstorm. And reading is a great way to do that. But how do you sort of make the reading interactive? This uh, part of this word and phrase called input and analyze text, you can take a text. So for example, there's a text that I used called Seven Cultural Concepts that we don't have in the USA. Um, and it's just like a little newspaper article. And so basically with this, you just simply copy all of this. copied it right and then you have you enter your text below here so now we're on the analyzed text version of it so they can actually switch back and forth from the frequency list to the analyzed text list and you simply paste it in there you search it and now what's happened Anybody? Now you have your words in, uh, you have your blue words, which are frequency range of one to 500 words. You have your 500 to 3,000 uh, most frequent, frequently used words, and you have your
you 3,000 and above uh, most frequently used words. Um, I, I like to teach chunks of language to people, and one of the ways I like to talk about chunks of language is, uh, say, there are two types of words in English. What are the two types of words? Exactly. Content and function words. And so, function words provide the structure or the grammar. Content words provide the meaning or the content. Um, so, which words do you think are going to be the function words? Blue? Green or yellow? Function words are going to provide the structure. They're going to be the words that we use a lot. These are going to, so the blue words are words that, and then on this, uh, on the handout, I ask the students, do you know these words? And usually, especially, you know, at the, this is for a high, intermediate, advanced level class, the answer is yes, we know all of these words. Um, the green words, yes, we, mo we know most of these words. The yellow words, eh, not so many. And so here we go, we start talking about, okay, the function words and some content words are gonna be blue, but your main content words are gonna be the green and the yellow. And so now students can take this, and without even reading it, oh no, that's a terrible thing to say. Um, without even reading the reading, they can start to understand the vocabulary of this topic. And so we're doing seven cultural concepts uh, we don't have in the USA. What are gonna be the main ideas of this essay? Culture. What else? Any other ideas? Okay, countries, different countries, right? And so now we can start to go through um, day to day has to do with culture, celebrate has to do with culture, spiritual beliefs has to do with culture, and you can start to look at these words and start to understand what are the content words of this article. These are the words that the students want to begin to sort of research and to understand so they can use in their writing. Um, let's go back up here. Um, let me get here. Okay, so I want the students to start to understand the frequency words, but also they need to understand that they can click on this word. Uh, and when they do that, it gives them the list of word here. Um, now it also tells how many times each word are each word is used in the uh, can you see that? In the um, reading. So hagi or hiki, I don't know. Are there any Dutch speakers? What is it? Danish, what is it? Um, togetherness or friendliness. How do you say the word? So then you guys don't know how to answer that. Right? Cozy, yeah. 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 cozy. It's cozy. Um, cozy, yeah, whatever. Cozy is a cozy. Um, cozy, right. So. I also, so they get to see, okay, it's used seven times, celebrate, it's used three times. They get to see the frequency of the word, but then they also can start to read through this list, and they can start to say, okay, I, I know this word uh, lowers, but I don't understand this word manifestation. And they can then start to click on these words, and they can start to explore uh, the, how these words are used, right? Um, so, and again, it relates to the other uh, the word search site where the words are, the different parts of speech are colorized. And for me, I, I like visuals, I'm a visual learner, I like to see these colors and hopefully the students, some of the students can start to see these visual colors and then start to see that there are patterns that develop in the language. Um, so again, we copied and pasted the text in. Um, now they need to start exploring these words. Now they can click on them over here, or they can click on them in the, uh, in the text up here themselves. Um, let me find, okay, so on, the, on this exercise I use the word bathing, right? So we click on the word bathing, and again, it, nothing comes up. And you'll say, well, why not? Do we want to use bathing as a verb, an adjective, or a noun? In this example, bathing is used as a noun. So we're going to click on bathing as a noun. And again, it gives the definitions of the word bathing, and it gives the collocation of the word bathing. 
so then I say, I talk to the students about this idea of forest bathing. I mean, how many times have you had a conversation with somebody in English about forest bathing? <laughs> Art history, perhaps. Mm. So, um, and you could also talk about, what, the quotation marks and things like that, but I would say, you know, is forest an actual co-location that we use with bathing? Uh, when we start to look down here, we can see that it's not used very much. Uh, but what is used as a co-location for bathing? Um, What's that? <laughs> so again, I want them to look for the, uh, the concordance examples for the definitions so that they understand that they need to be reading for context. Uh, that's a big thing. They can't just pick a word and use any co-location. That co-location has to have the same context as the topic that you're writing about. Um, and so again, I go through and I have them do something like, let's see, what do I have here? Uh, so what co-locates, the word in the left box, what are some synonyms? Um, let's see. Okay, so for example, they're going to do bathing suit. So we're going to go over here and we're going to do bathing suit. Where is it? No, I don't see it. Do you guys see, there it is, verb suit. Anyways, um, now sometimes, again, sometimes uh, that bathing suit a long while. Wait, wait, that's not. Okay. Changing out of your wet bathing suit as soon as possible. Pink is a verb. Is that correct? No. No. So, I love this, 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 uh, this website, but sometimes this website, you know, it's a machine. So suit can be a verb, and so obviously this is miscategorized. So I don't know. I just, I want students to sort of begin to understand that, okay, this is a way to help us explore co-locations, but it's not perfect. Um, and the more you use it, the more you understand, uh, but you're still going to have to be thinking about things and questioning what you're reading. Um, so anyways, they can go through and they can then start to learn about things like, uh, okay, how does bathing suit co-locate? Um, and so not only do we want to look at the, just the word bathing and suit, but what else follows? What other patterns do you see? So as I scroll down here, tell me, what patterns do you start seeing? What comes before bathing suit? What comes after bathing suit? Where verbs go where? Okay, let me make this a little bit easier to read. Okay, here we go. Um, so you're seeing, and what kind of verbs go with bathing suit? Try on. Try on. Where do you see try on? I can't see anything. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this better? Oh, yeah. yeah. Much better? Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, let me see if I can do this. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, what do you see? You wear a bathing suit. Put on, put on. Right, put on a bathing suit. Step in. What about what if we go after a bathing suit? Uh, preposition. So what else do you see? Um, have a bathing suit on, you put a bathing suit on, you have a bathing suit on. And so what the students then are asked to do is, okay, what kind of grammar do you see? So you say something like, have a bathing suit on, put a bathing suit on. Um, and they would then put the prepositions after the word bathing suit, so you can start to see it. Uh, and again, context is so important when they're doing something like this, because if they're talking about swimming, they want to talk about a bathing suit. They don't want to talk about uh, a bathing your hands or bathing whatever. Um, now, not only, they can also go back and look at the frequency list, and if they wanted to, they could put bathing here. Uh, one other thing I forgot to tell you with this frequency list, I'll go back and do it really quick. Um, uh, 
see, this is what I'm telling you. I don't know why this has just now changed. Maybe because it's too big. So we'll go back here. Okay, so your, the resolution of your screen has a lot, is kind of temperamental with this. Um, so, so we did wash as a verb. We're going over here and we're doing multi-word. Okay, now, so for example, wash up and wash down. They have, it's the same collocation, wash down, uh, but again, they need to start reading the context of it. And again, I, I want them to start looking what goes before and what goes after. And so we have wash down, and what goes after wash down? What kind of parts of speech go after wash down? Blue yeah. nouns. Uh, what else goes? Prepositions, right? And so they're starting to see that, okay, I have this yellow, yellow, blue, blue, blue. And then they need to start reading and start discovering what these collocations mean. And so when we say wash down with a noun, what does wash down mean? Wash down pretzels with Irish whiskey. All right. So now they start to see, okay, wash down noun could be drinking. But it's not only wash down noun, but it's wash down with something. And so I'll say, okay, what kind of prepositions follow wash down? And you can see, okay, wash down from. But then what kind of words follow this wash down from? Wash down from higher ground, wash down from the White Mountains, wash from, wash down from the Carrazzo, wash down from the hills, wash down from the ceiling. And so these are going to be what? Noun phrases. Noun phrases, but what kind of noun phrases? Places. Locations, places. And so we have wash down from plus a place. And so students need to start seeing that. Compare wash down from with wash down by. Wash down by Dr. Kepler, or wash down with. So these exercises are designed so students can start to see uh, that, okay, we have the same word wash down, but wash down can mean three different things. It can mean uh, to wash down something drinking, it can mean to, to run down, uh, wash down can mean to clean off, right? And so that's what these little exercises are doing, are helping students sort of discover this. Um, okay, so this is a pre-writing exercise, and so what I do is I have students find the text, read the text, put the text into this word and phrase, and then they start to find collocations with their vocabulary, content words, right? Um, but then what happens after they write? How can we use these sites after they write? Because, you know, they're still gonna make mistakes. Um, so I have a, a couple other little activities. One of them, ooh, ooh. how do I bring that screen back up? Um, can I open that closed window? Yeah, no, I have two different windows, and I just closed one of the windows out. It's okay. I'll just write it down. off of uh, a New Yorker, it's talking about Google Glass. Um, this, this guy immigrated to America when he was uh, eight years old. His family's from Russia, and his father is a real macho man. And his mother is you know, less than happy that his father's a macho man, I guess. So um, it's talking about this guy and how his relationship with cars. Um, and there's a there's there's two collocations that I like in here: Playboy Bunny and Sex Rabbit. Um, and so we get to talk about you know Playboy Bunny and so on. But 
The father and the son are going to be, you know, men who are into nudity magazines. And the mother despises it. She doesn't like it. So who do you think uses Playboy Bunny, and which person uses sex wrappers? <laughs> the mother. Why does she use sex rabbit? Because she sees a rabbit and she opens it up and there's just a bunch of sex in the book, right? Um, so I like to use this to sort of, when I'm introducing these ideas of publications, because it kind of shows that the mother's using sex rabbit, the father knows Playboy funny, but the mother hasn't learned that collocation yet. Um, so she just says what she thinks it is, which is a sex rabbit. Uh, if you go out and you ask somebody at the store, do you have the Sex Rabbit magazine? <laughs> They're going to send you to the countryside. Um, animal husbandry or something, I guess. Um, so this kind of starts to look at, at, um, at this coca, and it starts to help students, again, just like I had with the other ones, explore this idea of coca. Um, now, we're not going to get too much into it. We're going to look at the other activity I have because it's more uh, helping students work with their errors. And so um, I don't have, sometimes I use the yellow or the green markers to highlight their errors, but usually I'm just circling and I squiggle line. And so uh, it also, this, this activity also helps students start to understand the common co-location. And so what are the common co-location patterns? We have verb object, we have um, adjective noun, we have um, noun verb or subject verb, uh, adverb plus adjective, noun, um, noun with a noun, so a box of cigarettes, um, adverbs with adjectives, and is that, did I make a mistake? And sometimes they just use the wrong word, and sometimes they get totally crazy. You can't do this, can you? So sometimes they get totally crazy. They use the wrong interesting in planes, so we can start to look for things like this um, with this activity. Or so, for example. Uh, more and more people have a car with social progressive. Uh, and of course, we know what that means because we've read it a hundred times or something similar, but nobody else does. And so more and more people have a car with social progressing. No guesses with what it means. Um, if, you read, <laughs> if you read what they were saying before, you probably would guess it. It means as society progresses or as society advances. So not only have they used the wrong transition yeah, with, they use the wrong word form social, and they use the wrong word form progressive, right? And so in these examples, some of these examples, for example, the, um, uh, the verb object, I took a coffee. So we're gonna use this website here, and this is, a, a, it's pretty heavy, it's, it's even more difficult than the word and phrase, but again, I give students multiple, um, multiple tasks, multiple times they're going to be, be, be doing this uh, on worksheets, and as they use it more and more, they become more and more comfortable with it, um, and some of them really get into it. Some of them, you know, some of my students are like, I'm never using this ever again. Okay, that's fine. Some of them are like, I'm using them all the time, I love it. But it's a tool that, you know, when students get out of the classroom, how can they begin to check these things? They need to learn how to check them themselves. So this, at least, they, they know it's there. Um, so with this, you can write phrases, okay? And so if you do something like, um, took a coffee, let me make it bigger. Uh, let me try to make it. Okay, so you take, took a copy and you search, and of course, what comes up? Oh, it's you took a copy. <laughs> and it gives you one example. Uh, she gra gratefully took a copy between her hands. And then you're, again, you're pushing this idea of uh, context. Does this match what you mean? Does this context match what you mean? And they'll say no. Um, students then can then say, okay, what part of speech 
is took. So, let me go back. I've shown them that took is wrong, but copy is right. So basically what they want to do is they want to look for a verb uh, to go with that object copy. Right? So then they can come, come over here and they can say, okay, I want to do part of speech, select, verb, and it gives you this verb star in brackets. And then you're just going to follow this with copy. Uh, and students then can start to say, okay, here are a bunch of different co-locations for coffee. You have a coffee, you drink a coffee, um, you drink a coffee. Sometimes you can put the article, I think I put the article in there, have a coffee, and it gives you something a little bit different. Um, Um, not only with this with this exercise, not only do they start to learn co-location patterns, but they start to understand how they can correct their own mistakes. Now, for the teachers, when you do this, the problem arises when you get things like, uh, you know, interest. I'm interesting in planes, right? Uh, so. These brackets, if I do bracket, interest, what's the base of interesting? Interest in bracket, uh, in, and we want to do the preposition in. So you can start to see, okay, interest in, interests in, interested in, interesting in. Uh, and again, they, they have to click on it. They have to read these examples and you'll say, okay, interesting in what? Verb ing. Interesting, interested in noun. Interested in verb ing. So what's following interested in is a noun for a verb ing. They said interesting in. What follows interesting in? Um, one of the things that was interesting in Karen's case, so here we're saying, okay, is the verb verb ing, interesting in a noun, right? Now sometimes you get things that are just totally crazy. So for example, we'll go back to that, uh, So with social progressing, what does that mean? There's, there's no way that, you know, I, I had to figure out a way that I can have stu students search this. Uh, so I just correct it for them partially. I don't want to correct all of it for them, um, and I tell them here, uh, because I want them to learn autonomous learning from this. And so what I'll do is I'll just type in, okay, or I'll just correct it and say, uh, as society, uh, and you need to find a verb after that. So as society, society progresses. Um, what about showing them the phrase and answering that and the, and obviously the results might not correlate at all with what they're trying to say? With social progressing? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So right, um, oh, one other thing. Uh, yeah, you have to, to register for this corpus site. The word and phrase one, you don't have to register. Right, so sorry, there are no matches uh, for this. There are no matching records. 
So they know if they come up to this and they get the screen, there are no matching records, that their co-location is wrong, that they need to start exploring it. Now, in this just drive, part of this just drive is they're exploring uh, words. So I won't go through the whole thing. You could do it later. Um, but you'll start to see that as you do this, so for example, uh, spatial skills. And ooh, what is this? Then they can start to see that spatial skills is a co-location here. Now, when they click on the spatial skills again, they have to read for context. Um, and you can also sort of find out start to use, and they can use it outside of the classroom when they're writing papers uh, for regular college classes. So I really, and I think if you have them do use them multiple times, um, do multiple exercises, um, they, they begin to figure out the parts of, of this that they like and the parts that they can use, and I've had students teach me a lot. Um, again, I take my students to a computer lab, and we do this we do part of the, the sheets together so they can start to get an understanding of it. And as we're working on it, they're teaching me things that I would never have sort of understood on my own. Um, can you remind us what level you're talking about? This is, again, I sum, it depends on the high intermediate class. I can get it with, sometimes I'll do it with a high intermediate class, but this is for advanced classes. Um, these are students who, you know, they're still making these co-location mistakes. They might understand co-location mistakes, but they just don't understand how co-locations work. And so this gives them a way for them to begin to check their co-locations. Um, now, as far as the, the word and phrase goes, uh, I use it with lower level classes because this word and phrase, I mean, that input and analyze text is so great just to sort of visualize the reading. Um, so we could just do one paragraph and understand the whole paragraph just by the content word. Uh, does anybody know what? Wabi Sabi is? Taking pleasure in old and perfect things. <coughs> Don't read it. <laughs> and so just by looking at. <laughs> Um, they investigate a lot quicker than it. Let's try it again. Yep. You have so, it on word and phrase, but we have not text. Hmm? You have it on word and phrase. Yeah, word and phrase. Analyze text.
it's not broken point enough. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> not a very spectacular thing. <laughs> shown you here, do you have anything that you see that you could use in, in ways that you can use it? Michael? Well, I have a question, not in reverse, maybe a possibility of using it, but have you ever used the analyze text to have students analyze their own text to input an essay, for example, to see what level of vocabulary they're reaching or if they are using publications or is it just great description? Uh, <laughs> no, because it doesn't break the system because um, it uses the words that you input to look look up natural collocation. So I don't I I have not, but I don't see why you couldn't have the student put their text in and then you know compare your notes and say okay just like I've done with uh, where we go with this worksheet here of uh, this is giving examples of their mistakes right. And instead of that, I'm, I'm telling them exactly how to enter it into word and phrase. Well, they could just simply click on appreciate. Uh, they could understand that, okay, now I need to look for the adverb for appreciate, and they could look at the word appreciate in that um, here and, and look for the adverbs that go before it. So yes, I think that's a, a real possibility. They have students input their text there, like you say, Look for collocations, but also, as you say, to sort of explore their the level of vocabulary they're using, because it gives you that you know the academic vocabulary, the uh, three thousand and above vocabulary. Are there any other sort of questions or ideas that you guys have from this? Yes. I normally teach the lower, low, low levels, but I can see this helping me pull you know um, ways to really pull out information from a, a block of text for my students. Right. And not overload them with all of the collocations, but maybe one specific to survival or something like that. Right. No forest bathing. Now, what of the... <laughs> no, right. no forest bathing. Right, right. <laughs> now, one of the um, questions that I ask is, look at the vocabulary. Is this vocabulary, is this text, does this text have vocabulary that is uh, too difficult for you or to your level. And so as teachers, we can also put this in, look at the vocabulary and start to say, is this too difficult for my students? Exactly. Yeah. So we can use it to, to sort of measure the text that we're using in our class. Any other ideas? Yes? It's actually not for writing, but I teach to a community of speaking, and it's the first thing that the, um, the analogy to the text where it color codes the content words track so well with, with what I'm teaching for the rhythm of English, you know, how the stress goes on the content words and you reduce the content words. Uh -huh. It gives a, a color visual really quick. So you can see that. They can, they can see the yellow words or the, or the beats, more or less. Um, so let me see if this is going to do it again. Because I'd like to... Do you guys understand what she's talking about? Yes. Right. Uh, what else? Anything else you guys? Any ideas from you? Um, yeah. I learned this with Chris, um, but just the word, um, if they type in a collocation and it's not very frequent, it will give you more frequent collocation. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. On which site? Just the word. This is not my thing. <laughs> Just the word. Yeah. So, for example, if they type in it, took a coffee, that's mm -hmm. the, the mistake. If, um, and you type on alternatives, the second search, it will give. This one? Yes. So let's see if that no. no, it won't work. But it'll give the it'll say how often took a coffee is used and how often had a coffee is used. Mm -hmm. And just by looking at the numbers, the students can see that had a coffee is a lot more frequent than took a coffee. So took a coffee is either very erudite or wrong. <laughs> right. So this is what she's talking about. You type it in, you can do combinations, like if you put coffee in. 
and you do combinations, it gives you a bunch of co-locations for coffee. And then she's saying, took a coffee, you can do alternatives, uh, and it gives you, it shows you alternatives for um, took a coffee from the thesaurus and also from learning errors. Uh, I have, I don't have anything with just the word. I actually find students like this just the word a little bit better. Um, because it's much simpler than the word and phrase in, in the, the code there. It, it crashes a lot. And the thing of it is, is when it crashes, it's not fixed for a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> it takes days. Because this is a private individual. My understanding is this is a private individual. Whereas the word and phrase and the coca are done by uh, BYU. And so last night, as I was doing some work on this, it crashed. And you know, 15 minutes later, it was back up and running. So, I mean, that's why I keep hitting search, because, um, anything else, you guys? I'd like to hear your ideas. Okay, any questions for me? Okay, thank you very much. If you'd like these,